it wouldn't be really on the water's edge because the parklands are quite wide there, but you wouldn't have to cross the traffic. You can go underneath the traffic. It would be in the embankment. It wouldn't be on the water's edge like it is on the Boston side Okay. because um, then you would have to go all the way down, but it would be an underpass under the, the embankment. Yeah, so you don't have to go up and cross through traffic, which I think is a terrific idea if it can be done. Mm -hmm. um, just as you know, we learned last night um, from the State Department of Transportation, they're going to do a feasibility study of doing that kind of underpass at the River Street in Western Half Bridge so that we can look at you know, how much time would it take to mm -hmm. build those kinds of underpasses and how much would it cost. And I think with that kind of information, we can make the judgment, should we do the underpasses now or are we going to have to hold off and do them later uh, based on the constraints of the Accelerated Bridge Program, which is funding all of these bridge projects. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was great news that the state is committed to do this yeah. feasibility study and then we can really make the decision about these underpasses based on some hard data rather than say, we think this is a good idea, let's do it. We need to put a price tag on it, we need to understand could it delay construction too long or can we fit this into the construction project and it's affordable? Mm -hmm. So I that, thought that was terrific news coming out of the state, and we'll see what the facts tell us about whether yeah, this is possible yeah. or not. And there is, there is the example um, of where that was done um, later on to a bridge, and that's the Elliott Bridge um, near the Cambridge Boat Club. And there they added the underpasses many years after the bridge was built, and it allows runners, walkers, bicyclists, to go underneath the bridge while the traffic goes over. Imagine if all those people would have to fight the traffic, which there is, is very um, heavy and there's no, there's no proper cross, there's no crossing there. So the underpasses are very important. And the same with the Anderson Bridge, they're also looking at ways to um, add underpasses under there. So um, if you have views on that, you might send the Conservancy a message at crc at the charles.org. Um, or let, let your city councillor or your state rep know how you feel about the bridge restorations and about underpasses. Now, Marty Walls, you also uh, will soon be starting serving on a commission. It's called the Charles River Water Quality Commission. It's really a commission about swimming, bringing swimming back to the Charles. So what do you expect on the, uh, the very first commission meeting, which will be the 24th of April? Uh, uh, in March. March. I was going to say just March, in, in two weeks yes. or so. So I'm very excited that this commission is finally off the ground. Um, I want to give a special acknowledgement to State Representative Alice Wolf from yeah. Cambridge who helped um, guide the legislation to establish the commission right through the legislature. So you know, Representative Wolf played an important role on getting this up and running as well. And so I'm very pleased that it's finally going to meet so that we can think strategically, can we return swimming to the Charles River, and if so, where? Mm -hmm. And how do we do it in a way that keeps the water clean, keeps the swimmers safe, um, and allows people back into the river? I mean, it's an incredibly exciting opportunity. So we've got to confront the challenges. What are the barriers to returning swimming to the Charles River? And let's figure out how do we remove those barriers? Yeah. Um, it, you know, the water's clean enough most days to swim safely. And, and I've seen you swimming in the Charles River, so you know you can live to tell the tale that it's safe enough. Yeah. You are braver than I am. Um, I didn't go in the day I saw you swimming. Uh, but since we know the water's clean enough on most days, you know, so that hurdle has been overcome. So mm -hmm. now we've just got to get through the other hurdles and get ourselves making it possible to swim in the Charles River again. I mean, the yeah. pictures of, of what it used to be like when there were, you know, on a warm summer day, you know, adults and kids swimming in the Charles River is an incredibly inspiring vision yeah. of what it well, really could be. Those those historic images of of thousands of people. There were beaches. I mean, Magazine Beach, but also on the Boston side, Alston, Brighton, Herder Park, um, beaches everywhere. It's there were a lot of people swimming, but the water was not clean. It was just the fact that people didn't know that the water was so dirty that they kept swimming. But now we have a whole different. Um, we know that the water is clean and we have much tougher standards, but now it's a matter of overcoming those love that dirty water um, problem that people feel comfortable again and to find ways that don't overburden the DCR with having to run yet more beaches. I, I know you've been very um, outspoken about keeping magazine beach, the magazine pool open. Cool. Um, so this is a big challenge for DCR. 
So how can we make swimming possible without adding a big burden um, to the state? Yeah, unfortunately, one of the, the, the downsides to the fiscal crisis we're in is that state funding for the Department of Conservation and Recreation is getting cut and cut and cut, and so we are starving that agency. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got to find a way to stop doing that. Um, because that agency has an enormous amount of responsibility, not just in Cambridge, but from one end of state to the other. And we are starving that agency of resources. And so you can see it in the state of the infrastructure, in the, you know, the, the pools, the parks, the beaches. We're asking DCR to do an awful lot. So mm -hmm. I think it's a very real concern that if we ask them to do more, how can they do more when they can't even keep up? with what it is we're asking them to do now. And we'll use the magazine beach pool as an example, is that the pool's not open for very much time during the mm -hmm. summer at all. And so last summer we advocated very hard to keep the pool open through much of August. And so I've already met with the House of Representatives Ways and Means Committee Chairman, um, Charlie Murphy out of Burlington, to say we need to get money put into DCR mm -hmm. to keep the pools open all summer. You know, because last year the pools were going to close in the middle of August when it finally warmed up. You know, we finally got summer in mid-August just as the pools were closing down. Yeah. And so we've got to find a way uh, to keep those pools open right through the summer because kids are home, families are home, it's hot out, um, and, they're, and that's a tremendous resource. So until we can get swimming back into the Charles River, keeping those pools open for the entire summer has always been a priority for me and now we've got to fight even longer and harder for it yeah. given the fiscal crisis that we're in. Yeah. Well we're very lucky in Cambridge that we have an advocate like you um, in the State House um, who knows the river, who loves the river, loves the parklands. So um, if you just joined us this is the Charles River Conservancy Parkland Show and um, you will be able to see this show and previous shows on YouTube and if you have questions about the parklands or suggestions, you can reach us at the CRC at thecharles.org, um, uh, the website. And you always, you always open for your constitu constituents to, to contact you. Um, so that is wonderful that we have such an advocate in you. Yeah, I, I take uh, personal ownership of what's going on in the Charles River Parklands and on these bridges, and so I welcome the feedback. If people have suggestions or ideas for the bridge projects, by all means, um, get in touch with my office and look forward to working with uh, the stakeholders in all yeah. these parks and bridges. Um, before we leave, I wanted you to be aware that the City of Cambridge is actually doing a plan a riverfront plan, which is a very exciting step um, to update the old MDC, the old DCR master plan, and in a way make it part of Cambridge. And because this, these parklands are so much of uh, so much value to Cambridge, so I think you might be working even closer with the city of Cambridge because um, the, the DCR and the city of Cambridge will work together to implement some of these recommendations. For, for the parklands. Yeah, for those of us that use the parks, it doesn't matter whether it's a state park or a city park, it's our local park. Yeah. And so I think it's a very exciting development that the city of Cambridge is coming in and trying to do a riverfront plan and then work with the state to get that implemented. I think that's all just really great news. Yeah. Well, um, thank you for joining us tonight, um, listening, um, talking about the parklands which belong to all of us and we love and we care and they make up the, the quality of life in Cambridge but they need your support and Marty Walsh thank you for coming tonight and thank you for all the work you do for the parklands for the citizens of Cambridge and we'll see you out there on the parklands bicycling and running and maybe swimming someday absolutely mm -hmm. thank you very much my pleasure